The Columbus crew have not looked forward to matchups against DC United. Coming into this season, the crew had only come away with four regular season wins in 16 games. For three straight years, DC has knocked the crew out of the playoffs. But after going over 13 at RK Stadium, the crew snapped a winless drop with a 2-1 win. And now the black and gold hope to turn back the defending champs in Crew Stadium. It's Soccer Saturday next on ESPN2. from the first soccer-specific stadium ever built in this country, Crew Stadium, and what a rivalry we have. They meet again. DC United is on the road against the Columbus Crew. The crew have won two straight games. And a pleasant good evening, everyone. Welcome on a Soccer Saturday. I'm John Paul Delacamera. Big day for soccer in this country, not just because of MLS, but because of the Nike U.S. Cup, which began today at RFK Stadium. The USA take on South Africa. This is one of two goals scored by Kobe Jones. One was enough. It turned out to be the game winner. It was a 4 to nothing romp over South Africa. The USA starts the tournament off in style. My partner in the booth tonight is recording star Alexi Lalas and a former member of that U.S. national team. What did you think of your ex-teammates today? I tell you what, that was a great game to watch. Lots of excitement, lots of goals. Everybody wants goals. But most importantly for Bruce Arena, it was a chance to see his players to do a little fine-tuning because right around the corner is qualifying. And everybody knows that's the most important thing. And because of World Cup qualifying, several key players are out today. That and injury. And D.C. United is going to be far more effective than the Columbus crew. When you have so many injuries, though, Thomas Rangan knows somebody must step up. He has high hopes for young Chris Albright. Chris Albright, a young guy, lots of potential. And Thomas Ranga is looking for him to score. A thousand minutes without a goal. Finally broke the drought last week. Echeverry in, got his noggin on it right in the corner. You know, he's got confidence from that goal. Then he got up top Diaz Arce. Last week, a huge trade. Coming back to D.C. United where he won two championships and looking to find his form with D.C. Now, Columbus is playing better. One of the reasons the good health of Jeff Cunningham yeah. Gotta have a Je uh, healthy Jeff Cunningham. Here's a guy, he can take the ball, he can dissect defense, put us right through the legs here, and plays it off to Dante Washington for a goal. Talking about Dante Washington, using his size and his strength, has scored a lot of goals for Columbus, and they're going to have to count on him today. Well, he's been a goalkeeper's nightmare so far for rival keepers in Major League Soccer. And speaking of the men in the nets, you've got Preston to the left, Jordy to the right, and Preston, by the way, 7-1 against the Columbus crew. Here's the rest of the lineup. In the back for D.C. United, Eddie Pope had some injuries this season. He's going to have to come in and solidify the defense uh, for United. In the midfield, you look in Columbus, Robert Wardika, great free kick specialist. Any free kicks you see, he's going to be licking his chops, going up there and, and hammering it home, hopefully. Pete Marino came in. He's been in the soccer wilderness for the past couple of months. Thomas Rangan Rog called him up and said, hey, come on out and play for D.C. United, and he's here. Whenever these two clubs meet, you can be sure it's going to be physical. You can also be sure it'll be a close game. D.C. and Columbus will kick it off when we come back. He has risen from the underworld in a search for dominance. I drew and tasted and felt your blood. Explore the inner sanctum of the Dark Angel. From his early beginnings in Mexico City to his superstar status at WCW. Vampiro, another nail in the coffin. Available throughout the month of June. The excitement is in demand. Pay-per-view for the demanding viewer. You rule. This month on Time Warner. Cruising can be one of life's most wonderful pleasures. The feel of the road under your wheels and the wind rushing through your hair. But if you try cruising without auto insurance, eventually you'll end up working a lot harder for it. It's all you need for a great shave. Hi, I am 
Sammy Sosa, and I am asking people to step up to the plate and take the Pepsi challenge. So you're a Coca-Cola drinker? Yep. So we can change your mind? No, I grew up drinking Coke. We're gonna see which one tastes better. nationwide. More people prefer the taste of Pepsi over Coke. I guess I'll have to go with Pepsi. Pepsi's yeah. better. I'm having a great day. So take the Pepsi challenge and let your taste decide. Major League Soccer on ESPN 2 is brought to you by the new Vic Soft Win. It's all you need for a great shave. By Pepsi, the joy of cola. And by MasterCard, official card of Major League Soccer and friend of soccer fanatics everywhere. Welcome back, everyone, to Columbus, Ohio. The Columbus crew against their rivals, D.C. United. They no longer play in the same conference, but I'll tell you, the rivalry is still there. Here is part of the youth movement of D.C. United. Chris Albright, he's getting more minutes than even he probably thought he was going to get because of World Cup qualifying. Yeah, I talked to him early, or earlier in the game, or early before the game. I said, hey, are you ready to go? This is a big chance. And, you know, he felt the pressure with a 1,000 minutes without, without scoring a goal. Touted as, you know, one of the, the phenoms coming into D.C. United. And, you know, he, he's got to score. Well, counting this man, Denton, D.C. will have started seven players this year under the age of 24. And we don't have stats to see if they did it last year, but we can pretty much guarantee that they did. They've been hit more this year, it seems, by call-ups to the national team and also some injuries as well. Moreno was called up to the national team, but he was injured, and that's really why he's not playing. They expect him to be out maybe two to four weeks. And we'll see how Chris Albright and company goes today as we get set to kick this one off from Columbus, Ohio. We have seen the site of this year's Major League Soccer All-Star Game in July, July 29th. Next year, 2001, they will host the MLS Cup. All set. D.C. United in white. Columbus will be in black. Cunningham and Dante Washington are over the ball, and we're underway. And it's taken away right away by the workhorse of the midfield, Richie Williams, number 16 for D.C., Eric Denton. Up for Williams. That one's blocked. Debrito will take it over. And now it's played over the left side to Barzija. Broken up right at the halfway line by D.C. United. We'd like to thank Honda and all of our Major League Soccer sponsors for allowing us to bring you tonight's game without interruption. Washington thought someone was making the run. Instead, Denton takes it. Williams. Tackle away. Richie Williams again. He'll need to come up big in this road game for D.C. as it's played across in the air. Not a down. Just wide of Mark Doherty. Thomas Rongan says they want to keep the same philosophy, even though they have five guys out. Denton out here wide gets a great cross off with his left foot. And Diaz Arce coming from behind. Fender doesn't see him. It comes and just, get, just gets his head on it. Great opportunity right at the beginning of the game for D.C. Here, Thomas Rongan, you're trying to figure out a way to get this team back on track. This is their worst start to any season. Long clearance up. Jason Farrell is there. Getting a rare start today. Normally he'll come off the bench. Here is Farrell. Right side for West. And DC's got it. Hope made the pass to Tally. The long ball. Mike Clark is back there. Both teams going with three in the back, although there will have players coming back and helping out. Sometimes you see five at the back. Here's the long ball. DC is getting burnt. Cunningham is in with Pope Tally. They shot it out. Tally. 
switching it across. East United giving up now 11 goals in the first half, much more in the second, but six of them in the first 15 minutes of the game, which puts your team in a hole right away. And Doherty getting ready to put it back in play for Ansel Elton. And now it's Clark. Clark will wear the captain's armband with Laffer injured, but Laffer could play today. He's missed time with a shoulder injury, and when Laffer does play, they will more than likely go to four in the back. Ansel Alcock, the international from Trinidad and Tobago, gave that ball away. Albright had a hard time with it, now plays it up. Marino is coming back just to get a supply of the ball. They called him Sneaky Pete when he played here. Did great coming off the bench. Creating a spark. Today he starts. Denton on the steal. More of a giveaway from Farrell. Nice hustle. That's where speed does help. Ansel Elcock will clear. And that one's going to go out. But it's better to go out there for Columbus than where it was. Ansel Elcock, Stern John's cousin. Stern John, by the way, was at the game in Miami and trained with the team this week. But rumors about any kind of a comeback here right now or just that, rumors. Still on the contract in England. Here's Anger with that shot that's blocked. A couple of bad giveaways here by Columbus, but they haven't had to pay a price yet. Now the foul is called. Richie Williams and Andre were both in there. Tom Fitzgerald started off here as the interim coach when he replaced Tina Leokoski. Won several games, eight in a row at the start. And got his team into the playoffs. Fitzgerald's team with a one-goal lead thanks to Cunningham. Washington plays it back to Barcija. Lead pass blocked. DC fumbled around with it. They allow Barcija to get it back. Otero got it, dangerous play on Robert Barzija. We'll have to do a little bit more today with Pelusa Perez out of the lineup with an Achilles problem, so Barzija's role will change today, too. Here's Otero. Part of that youth movement for DC. Kerry Talley drives it, but it's right at Jordan. Major League Soccer Saturday action continues next week with a couple of games. First on ESPN 4.30 Eastern. We'll be back here at Q Stadium. Columbus and Dallas will be in the Central Division matchup. Then on ESPN 2 at 10.30 Eastern, LA Galaxy and Luis Hernandez taking on the Colorado Rapids. For more information on these games, log on to ESPN.com. A part of the Go Network, Go.com. Mike Clark pushing up right side. The leader in games played for Columbus. West comes back. That's a low cock going along. Clark makes the run. He got behind Denton. And again, they still want to play on that right side with Agus missing there and Ben Olsen. That's a big loss. And, and, and what Columbus wants to do is put pressure. They've got a beautiful night, a great crowd. They're playing home. You've got to win. I mean, they're playing strict three up top. And then you've got Farrell. you got Mario Glory. It's almost sometimes five up the top. And that puts a lot of pressure on the defense to come back. The danger is... Do the math, you're in trouble. Here's Gorey heading it out, not out of danger. Otero, one of the project 40 players, broke it up. Third by Ansel Elcock, not high enough. Now it's Bonger. Keeping it on the ground for Marino. DC brings several players forward. Diaz Arce was calling for the ball instead. It went toward Albright, and now it's third away. Columbus got back though in waves to defend, and now Cunningham is the only player near the halfway line. Andre going up, and there is Jordy. An unorthodox sort of toss, but it got them on field. Whatever works. Marzia had the speedy west, but it was deflected behind him and out. Still Columbus's ball on the throw in. Robert Marzia, their leader in assists every year that he's played on his team. Just three away from 50 in his career. Muscled off the ball, and maybe questionable little foul there. 
Here's the tackle. West gives a little push, then a little trip. West wanted it, obviously, to go the other way, but it does not. Long ball towards Diaz Arceus. We're back to live action. Farrell blocked by Talley. Otero. Here's Richie Williams. Richie's 30th birthday today. Happy birthday, Richie. Right side, Albright. Nobody making the run, at least not close enough. Denton was the closest to it. The ball belongs to Columbus. There is Dante Washington, who scored half of his team's goals, which is really incredible. He only had four last year, but also, you look at those four goals, he was hurt. Yeah, and, but you, you, want, you want people to score goals. You have nine, nine goals he, he, he's scoring for, for Columbus, uh, but you really don't care where it's coming from. You like to spread it out, but if Dante's hot, get it to Dante, let him score. And I talked to him earlier uh, down in the tunnel, he was like, yeah, I'll, I'll keep scoring. I'm having a great time here. Things, things are going well for him. It's a second stint here, traded for Brad Friedel a couple years back. They never wanted to get rid of him, but they wanted Friedel. And Dallas wanted Washington. I hope we didn't break that microphone. Here's Tally. Pushing it back to Eddie Pope. Eddie just back from a recent injury. Otherwise, you would expect that he would have been part of the call-up for the U.S. Cup that began today in RFK Stadium. Richie Williams. Holding. D.C. down. One to nothing on the road. They've lost their last three on the road. Played much better last week at home, beating Dallas. Foul on Clark. He's not happy about it. Clark will play in physical. His man is Diaz Arce. He's expected to be, although that time he wasn't marking him. He's going over toward him now. And he will stick to him. Free kick coming up. Denton getting ready to put it in play. Eric Denton out of Santa Clara University. Took his team to the final. Lowe's to Indiana. In the box. Brought down. Off the chest, apparently, of Marino. To the end line. It was almost knocked out. It stays by the corner flag. Now it's pushed up the wing. Cunningham played it back. One deflection, then another. Back to Williams. Trying to go outside to Albright. Glory's on him. And out it goes. Throw in coming up. Chris Albright, fresh off his first professional goal a week ago. And Mario Gori marking him for now, anyway, on that side. Out of town today, San Jose. With three goals in the last five minutes. Winning 4-2. to two. Colorado really struggling this year. So many injuries on that team, but they let you know that. We talk about, at the top of the show, about Chris Albright. And we've said his name maybe twice here. He's not gotten involved in the game. He's not getting the ball. He's not making himself available. He's, he's got to get more involved in the game. Even getting crosses, getting the ball, taking people on. And his strength in the air, even the balls in the air, he's not winning. Played upfield. Cunningham tried to get around Eddie Polk. Cunningham has so many outstanding one-on-one -on -one moves, and we're finally starting to see them because he's healthy. Here's Denton holding. Sending it. Nice ball. Andre waits for someone to make the run. It's a good run by Denton. He'll play it back to the middle, but nobody was on the same page. Debrito. He was fouled. Free kick coming up for Columbus. How Columbus played in your mind after getting that first goal? Well, the thing that I see, the big major difference out here, is the bite. Every time one of the D.C. United players gets the ball, there's a Columbus guy right up as you know what, challenging him, making sure it's not easy. As opposed to the Columbus players, they get the ball, they got time, you know, they can uh, have a coffee and a smoke and hang out and pick out what uh, what player they want to hit it to. There's Odger with the long ball. And Farrell denies that. A slip there by Clark enables D.C. to take it. It was Otero who found Williams. Terry Talley playing on the left side for Agus. Normally he's on that right side. Sometimes in the middle when others are out. Dante Washington on the turn. This one goes into the crowd. Back it comes. And Cunningham was free. Tough touch there. He's too fast for his own good. That's a, we talked about the importance for Columbus, even though they're playing so, so many people up top of getting back and having the players with the willingness to come back and play defense. A little while ago, we saw West come, come all the way back 
take a ball right to the right to the midsection and play it forward. That's the type of attitude, that's the type of player you need if you're going to play this type of system. Let's talk about that. DC's got three in the back and they're going up against three front runners. So how does that all work out as Doherty back pedal? Well, you know they're going to have to mark and they're going to pick and choose their times if they can break the pressure. But then they got to maintain possession. Right now, DC, there's no flow and there's no real creative uh, person out there who's making who's making things happen, getting the ball and making that transition from the defense once they, once they break pressure into the offense. Here's Ansel Alcock. If you missed it out at the top of the telecast, several key guys are out, including the guy that nobody does that, Marco Echeverry for DC. Hope will play it back to Prestis. Up the right side it comes. Two to Cooks. In the middle, Richie Williams. All the way across. Carry Talent. He'll strike it long. He was looking for Diaz Arce, who's well marked. DeBrito comes back. In the air. That foul goes on Kerry Talley. Out of the University of North Carolina. Columbus leaves on a Cunningham goal. We're in the 19th minute. Crew Stadium. Columbus. No rush here. Very patient. They're going to take as much time on this free kick as possible. They got the one nil lead. They'll pick back and they'll, they'll choose their times. Coming back, Diaz Arce. The first time Clark wasn't really on him, but he's allowed to get back. Here is Diaz Arce. Second all-time score in MLS history. To the right side, Otero now on the flank instead of in the middle. Otero plays it all the way back. Judah Cooks pushing up. Keeping it on the ground to Marino against his ex-team. Diaz Arce able to turn. We look for Albright. And now Clark will get it. Mario Gori tracking Albright all the way back into the box. Tally almost lost it there. Took his eye off when he saw West. Richie Williams outside to Albright. Cooks. Long one. Too high. But he gave it a try. Judah Cook's playing in his sixth game. That's how many he played in all of last year. Good possession from DC, keeping the ball. But the shot comes about 30 yards uh, from, from a defender. That's that's what they got out of it. It's so congested in the middle, and all of Columbus is back, absorbing the pressure. Got to get it outside and get the crosses. Oh, the Pepsi power shot measures speed, 54 miles per hour, but it doesn't measure accuracy. That one was off target, and Doherty will put it back in play. Gone beyond 20 minutes here in the first half. And Columbus have the lead. Third out of play, we'll have another throw-in coming up for the crew. Mike Clark will take it. Back for Ansel Elcock. Diaz Arce's on him. Yegley. Pushing it forward. Good trying for Cunningham, that's clear. Williams to Onger. And that was behind Marino. Back for Yegley. Todd Yegley will lift it. West try to play it upfield. Diaz Arce in the air, couldn't get it. Clark is back. Just got it there with enough to get it back to Doherty. From that far side, it's Barzina. He can strike the long ball. Got there, Washington will go after it, but Prestis saw it coming. Prestis read it perfectly. He knew the long ball was coming in. He was off his line before the, before the kick was even taken. Crooks is to the right. Looking for Albright. They threw a pretty pressure on the three at the back and on their younger players especially. A tear up the side and yegri has got him covered as that ball goes out of play. DC will have a throw in. And so Tero towards the end line, Diaz Arce. And it's turned away with speed, Ansel Alcock. Cunningham is ahead of him, so is Washington. West makes a run on the right. Alcock all the way upfield. Garcia wants it, gets it. The shot was blocked. It might have taken a second too long to develop. But Ansel Alcock ran at the length of the field. All right. Now for Richie Williams. Off a touch, broken up, given away. Here's Farrell. 
Meeting Denton with speed on the wing. The ball needed to be closer to West. Denton with a good recovery. Terrell players. Upfield, a harmless ball, and it'll go right to Dorney. And so Alka taking, taking the ball the entire length of the field, and then putting a nice little ball over for Robert Ward. So you can take a little bit of time. But a good block there uh, by Jeff Onger to go the other way. But that came all the way from the 18. The crew just maintained their position. They broke pressure, and they came all the way out. Mike Clark on the ball. Getting it back from Brian West. Back to Ansel Alcock. Alcock will play it all the way back to Mark Doherty. This is Soccer Saturday on ESPN2. We come to you tonight from... Crew Stadium with Alexi Lalas. I'm John Paul Della Camera. Cunningham has the only goal of the game. He's got the ball. And down he goes. Foul on Cooks. He's a bit frustrated. I don't know what Cooks is yelling about there. He, uh, he took him down all right. He should be proud of that. That was a pretty good foul. <laughs> Left side for Zeha. Columbus attacking with the one goal lead. And Richie Williams gets called. He leads. D.C. and fouls committed, and you don't want to give up free kicks here. We told you about D.C. allowing so many goals on set pieces. You don't want to give free, free kicks, and, and Robert Verzi goes right there so he can take it. You know, this, this is experience right there. He pushed it by him, and then he went down. He knew he was going to get hit. He knew he was going to get pushed off, and then it's a judgment call. You lose it there, okay, no problem if you don't get the call, but he knew it. He pushed it by Richie Williams, and he fell down. One of the best free kick takers in all of Major League Soccer is Robert Garcia. We expect to be the one to strike this ball. 18 of the 30 goals allowed this year by DC United have come off set pieces. It is Barzia. They're not disguising it. Here it comes, but it's right at Prestis. And Prestis was looking to set up the offense. There's nobody open. Long clearance upfield. Diaz Arce looks for it. And instead, he was taken off the ball by Clark. Diaz Arce wanted a foul called. Mark will switch it over to Yeglin. 26th minute. One to nothing Columbus at home. Against their rivals, DC United. Headed up and then down in Washington. As the ball comes all the way back toward Prestes, he clears it away from Gorey. Dante Washington is still down right over the halfway line. They will tend to Dante Washington. Jerry Corey calls for the training staff to come out. And Jamie Bear. Dante Washington taking a whack on the back of the head right there. That hurts. You don't know what's going on in here. You're trying to get the flick on. Sheer head's actually going backwards. The defender comes up, smashes it right on the back of his head. Dante's in some kind of pain. He told me the other night he still feels the back pain from a car accident he was in the day before a game here in early May. Some back problems and some neck problems. And you never know when another hit can trigger more of that. It was a freak accident. He got hit from behind and actually missed a game. That's the only game he has missed. So Tom Fitzgerald has to be concerned because the man down has scored half of his team's goals. The trainer, Amy Bear, will assist him. And hopefully Dante Washington is okay. I mean, if it weren't for Dante Washington, who knows where Columbus would be because no one else was scoring goals. And we see the rest of the team's total. No one else had more than a few goals. So without Dante, they were in some trouble. The Nike U.S. Cup continues on Tuesday night live from Foxborough, Massachusetts. Kobe Jones will lead the USA against Ireland. Join us Tuesday on ESPN 8 Eastern Time. Kobe Jones, if you missed it earlier, two goals today as the U.S. beat South Africa to start off the U.S. Cup in style. We're still talking to Dante Washington, making sure he's okay. And he is. He'll come back on right now. Columbus are with 10 men as Dante starts a little jog, and then he'll try for the referee's attention, then come back on. He'll be all right. He's a, he's a tough guy. Probably thinks he's playing for Dallas right now, but it doesn't matter. He knows he has to score. That's all he knows. Those are some of the questions that you ask players when they get hit in the head. Well, if you've been trading around enough, enough times with some of these players, you can get confusing whether you get hit or not. There's Jason Farrell. Barzija holding. Robert Barzija, right side by Clark. Tally defends him on that side. Clark waits for the help to come. He doesn't get it. He stumbled, or he got some help. 
depending on your angle of it. Here's Otero to Diaz Arce. Diaz Arce will play it back to Denton. Only the second game Denton's playing in. Left side tally. Holding it, driving it across. And it's Doherty coming out. That's the first time I think that Diaz Arce has had a chance. And yet, that, that's, that's what Diaz Arce wants. He wants those half chances and he wants the ball swung in, those crosses. Early in the game, the only other chance that DC had was a nice, nice little head ball. He's coming in, but it, it's not his game to play the ball into him, let him turn. He's getting the ball for DC right now in the midfield, having to turn and having to play make. That's, that's not what he wants and it's not what he's good at. Mike Clark on the ball. Back for Anson Alcock. Alcock's missed five games this year due to World Cup qualifying. The team is two and three without him. He does a lot for them at the back. He's hoping the ball. Now to carry talent. Richie Williams. And Dante Washington has just been cleared to come back in. Got the referee's permission, so Columbus are back to 11 aside.
establish some sort of rhythm and, and pop one down back before the end of the half. DC with Albright. Onger into the middle. Hope is up. He thought about having to go from distance. Plays it instead to Onger. Lift it up. And it's cut by Doherty. Richie Williams is making a run of the post. And Doherty will clear it long. He had Washington and wide open on the other side. It was Cunningham had the ball been able to be flipped over. Doherty got the ball immediately off the cross. He said, all right, I'm going to find Dante, find that speed. I'm going to get it up as quickly as I can. It's worth a try. Williams will play it back to Otero. DC United looks for Denton. This one's tackled. Out for a throw. And DC trying to find the rhythm. We talked about Etcheverry being out, and he's their playmaker, but they're also missing their best goal scorer, too, in Jaime Moreno. Eight goals for him, 40% of his team's goals, and he does well, too, against Columbus. Scored eight times again. DC will have the depth and flick. He is Arce, bringing it back. He came in a recent deal from Tampa Bay. Gory, defending on that side, he touched it out last. Everybody's got a man on their back. Goes from Diaz Arce, who's got Mike Clark smack on his back, not letting him get a touch. Over to Albright, who's got Gory all over. He starts to flick it out by Cunningham. These two teams have only played each other twice this year. They used to play each other four times when they were in the same division, but you get the feeling, you know, they're not in the same division. The rivalry will live on. They're the enemy. All you have to do is listen to the crowd here to know that. Here's Debrino in the corner. Columbus will play it back to go forward. Yegley across to Mike Clark. Here is West with a flick. Dante Washington. Tally got it. Got Washington, I thought, too. Here's Richie Williams holding. Looks for the support. Has Tally left. Tally lifts it up. Yigley heads it out. Clark is there. Off Denton. Washington had it blocked. Dante Washington doing the dirty work himself. Coming back. For West. Clark's long ball way outside. Is Cunningham. Dante Washington coming all the way back into the Columbus end, flexing his muscles and just throwing people off and, and, and doing some of the dirty work, like you said. As a defender, you had to love that with forwards coming oh, up. You love it. You said, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Because, you know, forwards are flaky half the time. They don't know what they're really? doing. They want to score the goal. Really? They want to rip the shirt off. They want to do all that. When they finally come back and do a little honest work, you say, thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm willing to do some work for you now. <laughs> this ball comes back the other way, and Columbus has West back there. He let it go out because he knew that was going to be a goal kick. Brian West, some say he's the fastest player in Major League Soccer. You could argue it, certainly. He's among the fastest. He's already got better numbers this year than he had all of last year. And he's also playing with a little bit of players. Disappointed not playing on the Olympic team, the national team. He wants to prove himself, as, as do all players. He wants to catch the eye of the coach, and he wants to be there. The be all and end all for a player is to eventually get to the, you know, an international game to play for your country. He's only 22, so I'm sure his chances are not over. He plays well. Williams couldn't get it. Marcia, upside flag up. On Cunningham, and then Mario Gori risks the yellow card by shooting it after the whistle. Cunningham licking, licking his chops. He says, all right, well, I'm in, I'm in. We got the ball, lots of time. And he just uh, jumps a little bit off sides right there. But he saw it coming. He read the play and said, all right, I'm, I'm going to go. He jumped off sides. Are they being a little over anxious now with the one goal or no? You know, maybe. Maybe. That's what Good I'm going to go with. Maybe. That what is was candid. <laughs> that was candid. Right side. Judah Cooks. All right. Diaz Arce. Pushing it up. On the wing. Good hard run on that side. Cooks. And all it means is it's a goal kick. Cooks is the right back. He's gone forward several times. Trying to generate something. Well, you see that we hate DC side. That's a sentiment shared by many people, not just in the Columbus Stadium, in the Columbus well, area. People hate them because they win. Exactly. That's what it is. And that's, you know, you look at the DC and the, and the problems that they've had. No, no one has
has any sympathy for him. Everyone respect him and respects him and understands this is a great team, but nobody has any sympathy for him. People around the league are like, all right, finally, now you know what it's like to get beaten up on a little bit. He lived a good life for, for four years. Now, well, here it is. We've got a throw in coming up for Columbus. Thomas Rongan told me yesterday he still thinks they can win the Eastern Conference title. That's their goal. Even with the slow start. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. They're, you know, they're playing in they're playing in a division and, and, and in a conference that anything can happen and it, and it is one of the weaker ones. And with the talent that DC has, not only on the field now, but that's gonna come back. And it goes against Dante Washington. Who is getting spoken to by Jerry Corey. We're in the 39th minute. Columbus is trying to take a lead into the locker room at halftime for the third straight game. Before that, they went 10 straight games, either trailing or tied at the half. Williams for Talley. Farrell will chase him down, but Talley's got it. Talley, another good cross. Here's our save, but there's Doherty. Do you think Columbus will have to do a better job on Tally? He's made several long crosses on that side that have gotten through. He, he comes up, the defenders are coming up, and he cuts it back, and then as soon as he cuts it back, everybody on DC knows, all right, here comes the cross, and everybody's getting in there. And they're hoping for one to fall down. Mario Gore Gory almost actually put the ball right back down in for DC. A lot of averages, he keeps sliding those. One should go down. Throw it coming out for DC United. Denton. Carry Talent. Eddie Pulp, three at the back for D.C., but not the three they would normally want. Agus and Yamosa with the national team. And Jeff Agus, by the way, his 100th cap today. We congratulate that solid veteran. And he did it, too, at RFK Stadium, his home field. Otero to Diaz Arce. And Columbus clears it out. Rather Washington push it back. Mistake there. Denton pounces on it. Elcock was there. Denton shook him for this cross. Far side. Diaz Arce got to it and then Reno couldn't. But it was there. Much more classic DC United. You get to the byline, get a good solid cross off. Denton takes his left foot. This thing's whipping back. Diaz Arce knows he goes far post. Problem is he gets he gets in the air. He's got two guys hanging off him. He doesn't have the timing. And the ball comes a little bit behind him. But that's the type of dangerous play that you're looking for, DC. We remind you of coming up on our New York Live halftime report, which is very soon. We'll go back to ESPN News. They'll tell you about the USA and South Africa. We'll talk more about soccer Saturday plus our first half highlights. We have one goal that we can show you, maybe more. We still have some time left in the first half. Was over there in the far side. Referee says Columbus ball. Quick throw in. Cunningham was there to flex out for a corner kick. First corner for Columbus. Cunningham's over there. Normally Barzia takes it. That's what's going to happen here. Columbus without McBride and Perez today in terms of starters. Playing well. Marcia hangs it up. A deflected ball goes wide. Three players went down to the box. Two of them from D.C. One crew player is still down. Can't see yet who that is. Here's West. Hold it. Trying to play it across. It's blocked. It was Mario Gori with the headache. And Gori is back up and running back to the bed. And he's actually got the ball. Andre. Diaz Arce, the flex over, good hard challenge there from Yegli, and Yegli gets back into position to get that ball, gave it up to Otero, Otero, good direct run, he's still going, and then lost it as Park came back, that wasn't bad for the young player to come through, here on Soccer Saturday, you'll never guess who scored a goal, Diallo again, what a player he has been. What a find for Tampa Bay. They lead Dallas. That's in the Central Division matchup. The crew will keep their eyes on that. Three straight games, or two straight weeks, I'm sorry. Columbus has won their game, and their division rivals have all lost. This ball was cleared away by Gordy. Mario Gordy. Too high. No kick a little optimistic. Why not try it, 43rd minute? Fans here have been among the finest in Major League Soccer since Columbus had a franchise. Before they played in Ohio State, it was totally different. 
this is such a different atmosphere. Obviously, just from a field standpoint, it's a great field and around it. The atmosphere, the people here, it's a great crowd here tonight. It's been a beautiful, warm night. Everybody's come out. And if you're Columbus, this is who you want to play in front of. DC had it for a moment, then lost it. It's coming back. Mike Clark, 44th minute. Columbus at home with a one-goal lead. Mike Clark will hold. Back for Elcock. Garcia shifts to this side to help. Robert Garcia's pass intended for Washington. Tally took it away. Contra. And then Marino. Another giveaway. We've had quite a few of those. And a foul called on D.C. On Otello. He gets a warning. Update in Dallas. We earlier told you Tampa Bay led. They did. Then Dade scored shortly thereafter. So it's 1-1. Tampa Bay and Dallas. See how Tampa Bay goes without Diaz Arce after the trade of Paul Diaz Arce to D.C. United. He's playing tonight without much success. Tough to blame him, though. He's not getting much service. Here's DeBrito. Right now, if you look at Columbus, they have almost they have five players up top. Five players almost in a line. Always, And then what that does is it opens up the midfield. Huge midfield possibilities. John DeBrito just slips right into the midfield and says, all right, I'll take the ball. i got some space because DC's so concerned with all the Columbus players up top. Marcia to Mario Gore. He goes down. The play goes off. We're in the final minute of the first half. DC United gave up a goal early, but none since. So they're trailing just on the Cunningham goal. Marino was the intended target. It comes out. Williams didn't hit it the way he wanted to. All the way out to Dante Washington. Offside. The flag went up immediately from the near side. <laughs> Cunningham and Dante Washington still trying to work together, work their magic together. One minute of stoppage time will be put on. Here's Tally. We're in stoppage time now. Denton is wide. Coming through, West didn't close him. And that's just a bad ball. That's not going to do. That's not going to do. He did all the hard work. Juked his defender with the big left foot, came back, had his defender flying by in the air. Now you got to make the cross. You've got guys like Diaz Arce in there who want the ball. They want the ball in their head. they got to get it to him. Mark Doherty will put it back in play. 2.00 goals against average coming into tonight's action. He made 11 saves last week against Miami. He played big. All the way back. Look at the speed again. That's Cunningham. Nice nudge there from Talley. That's a great job one-on-one -on, -one on the sideline. Great job. Great work and just the speed. My God. Cunningham will have a throw in with time running out. Columbus on top. Clark flights it. DC will clear it. Marino nods it down. We're over a minute in stoppage. Gone. Diaz Arce. Puts on the brakes. Looks for some help. Wide to Albright. Here's the cross inside. It didn't reach Marino. And now Jerry Corey says that's it for the first half of play. So the score at the end of the first half. Columbus won. DC United no score. Stay tuned for ESPN News and the New York Life Halftime Report with Major League Soccer Saturday at ESPN 2 continues. What a first half we've had from the Blue Stadium. for the business traveler so you don't have to figure out where to stay when you're wheeling and dealing and working on the fly days in there you go local breweries beer shipped the same day it was born refrigerated distribution centers daily deliveries 
of Born on Dating. That's how we guarantee Budweiser is the freshest beer choice out there. All right, suckers. Ears up, minds open. Message from Mrs. Jones. What if your loved one only said I love you once every four years? What if you had to fly overseas just to find people who knew you? That wouldn't be too cool. Yet that's how y'all treat Michael, Mary, and Maurice. The world's fastest humans. Our track stars need more love. The more, the better. Can you dig it? Hey, Bill Duffy, what's on your plate today? Grandpa, look who's here. <laughs> We've got them all day. <laughs> Even on days like this, even after the heartburn strikes, it's not too late for Pepsid AC. Because Pepsid AC controls acid before, during, or even after the start of heartburn. Now they're having a great time. No matter what's on your plate, today should be heartburn free with Pepsid AC. Why so many days in hotels for the business traveler? So you don't have to figure out where to stay when you're wheeling and dealing and working on the fly. Days in. There you go. Time now for the New York Life Halftime Report. Let's join ESPN News. All right. Halftime at an MLS game for you. And uh, the Columbus crew up 1-0 on the D.C. United at uh, the half. Hi there and welcome to ESPN News Special. Welcome to those of you joining us on ESPN2 along with Ian Page. I'm Betsy Ross. Plenty of soccer today. We'll get to the U.S. Cup in a moment, but first we have more action from the MLS. Yeah, we start with a wild one in San Jose between the Rapids and Earthquakes. Uh, Betsy, let's get to the highlights there. San Jose had a 10-game home unbeaten streak entering today's game. First half, Paul Bravo scores off the header. Rapids up 2-0 on Bravo's second goal of the game. Bravo, second half. Earthquakes down 2-1. Just a few minutes left. Abdul Thompson. Conta scores at the 89th minute mark off the corner kick. We're tied at 2. Score tied at 2 now. Game at the 90 minute mark. And John Doyle with the lead pass to Dario Bros for the go-ahead goal. Earthquakes win 4 the two is San Jose scores four goals in the final 35 minutes of the game, including three in the final five minutes to pull off the win, four to two. And at the, in the second half, 28 minutes to go, uh, Miami and New England are scoreless as uh, Miami trails New England by three points for that first place in the Eastern Division. More action going on tonight in MLS. First half, Tampa Bay, Dallas tied at one. Tampa Bay. Only one point behind first place Chicago in the Central, taking on a last place Dallas. Action in a U.S. Cup competition. U.S. and South Africa first half. USA already up 1-0 off the corner kick. Reflection cleared out of the box and right to Kobe Jones. He blasts it in. USA up 2-0. Second half still. 2-0 USA. 65th minute. Jones sends one across. Claudio one times at home. 3-0 USA. Then the finishing touches. Ben Olsen sends in the cross off the deflection. Jones to Stewart, and he volleys it in. USA wins this one 4-0. The final, the biggest margin of victory for the Americans in almost seven years. U.S. plays Ireland on Tuesday in Foxborough, Mass. By the way, that's a game that you can see on ESPN. Other soccer news today. The draw for the 2000 Olympics held today in Sydney. The U.S. men's team ends up in a pool with the Czech Republic, Cameroon, and Kuwait. Meantime, the women's team caught in a tough draw here, having to face China in their group. U.S. is the top-ranked women's team in the world right now, and China is ranked second. They are together in the same draw. For those of you watching on ESPN2, we'll send you back to the game. Columbus over D.C. United 1-0.
like I can afford car insurance? Call and see. I know I'm supposed to have car insurance, but how can I afford it on my budget? Call and see. Getting busted without car insurance is a real nightmare. How do I prevent this from happening to me again? Call and see. Don't risk costly fines and the loss of your license. Call 1-800-SAFE-AUTO now and get guaranteed low monthly payments to fit your budget. 1-800-SAFE-AUTO-SAFE-AUTO Young stars have been making a lot of noise on the LPGA Tour. The veterans still have something to say. When they meet, they'll let their games do the talking. Wegmans Rochester International begins Friday at 3 on ESPN2. Hello. Got what it takes to do Sports Center? I'm Skippy D. Tonight on Sports Center. Go behind the Sports Center desk by entering the key to Sports Center sweepstakes presented by New Bex Light. Log on to ESPN.com for your chance to win. How did I do? <laughs> of history define our progress, so values define our character. The humanity that binds us, the integrity of our people, financial strength to provide certainty no matter where we are headed. The values that make New York life the company you keep. This summer, Jim Carrey is good cop. Your car is going to have to be moved. Pack it up behind the grocery store, will you, Charlie? Bad cop. What are you staring at? What is your problem? It's between me and the kid. The same cop. You're a split personality. Charlie is a schizo. From the directors of There's Something About Mary. There you go, Dick. I parked it for you. Me, myself, and Irene. Punch me in the face. Ready to off. June 23rd, only in theaters. This halftime report is presented by New York Life, the company you keep. Welcome back, everyone, to Columbus and the New York Life Halftime Report. I'm John Paul Dale, camera. Columbus leads by the score of one to nothing on Jeff Cunningham's first goal of this MLS season. And Soccer Saturday continues on ESPN. The Dallas Burn will be traveling to Columbus, where they must stop Dante Washington and the Columbus Crew. It's a battle of Central Division rivals, and you can see it here next Saturday. Then you can catch more of the action on ESPN2 in the LA Galaxy, led by Luis Hernandez. Travel to Colorado. They'll take on the Rapids 10:30 Eastern, 7:30 Pacific on ESPN and ESPN2, the worldwide leader in sports. When we return, Alexi and I will take a look back on the first half. This is the New York Life halftime report. ESPN2, Columbus leads at home. It didn't have to end like this. Armor all protected. Armor all car wax. It's not just shine, it's armor all. So, I hope you like lobster. Bill Duffy, what's on your plate today? Grandpa, look who's here. <laughs> We've got them all day. Even on days like this, even after the heartburn strikes, it's not too late for Pepsid AC. Because Pepsid AC controls acid before, during, or even after the start of heartburn. Oh, they're having a great time. No matter what's on your plate, today should be heartburn free with Pepsid AC. Hi, I am Sammy Sosa, and I am asking people to step up to the plate and take the Pepsi challenge. So you're a Coca-Cola drink, yep. So we can change your mind. No, I grew up so drinking Coke. We're gonna see which one tastes better. That one. <laughs> In taste tests nationwide, more people prefer the taste of Pepsi over Coke. I guess I'll have to go with Pepsi. Pepsi's yeah. better. I'm having a great day. So take the Pepsi challenge and let your taste decide. It didn't have to end like this. Armor all protected. Armor all car wax. It's not just shine. It's armor all. Tomorrow, the road trip rips into Arlington. Interleague action heats up when Steve Finley and the D-backs match muscle with Hush and the powerful Rangers. The ultimate road trip rolls on. Diamondbacks Rangers, tomorrow at 8 on ESPN. 
J.C. Candelo in a 10-round junior middleweight bout. Friday Night Fights, Friday at 9.30 on ESPN2. This copyrighted telecast of Major League Soccer and ESPN may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the expressed written consent of Major League Soccer and ESPN. Welcome back, everyone, to the New York Life Halftime Report. At halftime, 45 minutes gone, Columbus Crew leads D.C. United by the score of one to nothing. We welcome you back, everyone, to Crew Stadium on this Soccer Saturday with Alexi Lalas. I'm John Paul Della Camera. No surprise that the crew are leading, Alexi. They were the better team in the first half. They were the much better team, and, and more importantly, they came out early, and they said, all right, let's score a goal. We got Ansel Alcock in the back here. He says, all right, I'm going to dump the ball up. Cunningham's on sides. DC didn't sell the offside trap, and Cunningham says, all right, off to the races. Takes a nice shot, puts it right to the press his legs. But gets the ball, hits it off his head, broke the trap. DC United's got to sell that trap, and they can't be risking something like that that early. They're not sure. Jeff Cunningham's first goal this year in Major League Soccer. This has been the New York Life Halftime Report. We're coming back to Columbus for the start of the second half with the Columbus crew at home leading over DC United. By the score of one to nothing, Soccer Saturday continues after a short break. Cunningham was 
the only goal of the game. Holds up. And that ball goes out. AJ Wood getting a chance here right off the bat. You like to see it. Thomas Ryan has said, all right, this isn't working. Marino's not, not doing anything for me. I'm going to put AJ Wood in, see what can happen. A couple seconds into the half, he actually gets a chance. That's, that's something you want to see, and for Thomas Ryan, it looks good. And what do you think they've talked about? You don't just make one change like that in personnel. What would they have spoken about at halftime? I think first off, Thomas said, listen, it's 1-0. Everybody relax. Maybe we're not playing as well as we would like, but it's still 1-0. We're right in this game. And you just got to have some patience. Uh, then you make the, the physical changes. Here is Farrell, up the middle, Washington leads it, the flag is up again, the fifth offside call on the Columbus crew. It's kind of a harsh offside, oh, he's not really involved in the play, but he made the diagonal to try to be involved in the play. So that's one that they're going to probably look at in, in the uh, referee school and say, what is this, wasn't it? We'd like to thank MasterCard and all of our Major League Soccer sponsors for allowing us to bring you tonight's game without interruption. Second half is just a couple of minutes old. DC United trying to come back in this one. Only down by one. Williams to Cooks. Left it out. Williams again. Andre. Back for Williams. Sliding it across. Denton. And then Albright. Now it's Andre again. More possession for DC. That's a positive. Already, already decent play. Also with a lot more urgency. And when they do lose the ball, they're, they're winning it back right away, which is a trademark from DC. Judah Cooks. Diaz Arce coming back. Trying to turn on Yeagley. Williams. Outside for Denton. Here comes the cross up high. Third by Columbus, not out. Now it is. Marcia helped it out. Cunningham on muscle that time by Pope. Marcia couldn't get by him. A giveaway. Here's Pope. The shot was deflected just slightly, and that could have caused problems for Doherty. He got a nice deflection. Nice try from Eddie Pope. He's in no man's land, and he knows he's got to win the ball. Marzika tries to push it around, and Eddie Pope says, all right, I'll take that. Goes in and takes a shot, has a chance. But still, it's the pressure that DC's putting on right off the bat. They came back onto the field. They said, all right, we've had enough of this. We're going to maintain possession. And we're going to put you under pressure, Columbus. And last shot registered at 60. That's a Pepsi power shot. Hunter will hold right side to Cooks. Williams took that quick look, now advances. Diaz Arce, now facing goal. Try to play it through. Well, if you're Columbus, you like it the farther out he is because most of his goals will come from a lot closer than that. Exactly, and he'd be the first one to tell you that that's not his game, coming and getting the ball and turning and being creative like that. Dante Washington using speed and the strength you talked about. No foul was called. Dante comes in. Stopped, and then he went down. He's not going to call that. Absolutely no way. <laughs> because it was, a, it was a judgment case on the tally one. It right. went down and actually drew, drew the foul, I thought. And he didn't call it. So he says, I mean, there would, ha there would have to be bone protruding on that foul against Dante in order to call the penalty. I agree with you. Because I thought Dante called it originally. The Columbus crowd, obviously not in agreement as the ball is played long. A.J. Wood got behind Mike Clark, but that was not a good ball. And then Clark, did he touch it out? No, they say goal kick. Here we see the, the, the ball. Tally just gets his body in front. Dante Washington must push it, pushes him off the ball and then goes in. There's no way he's going to call it. No way he's going to call it. Here is Dante again trying to get to the ball and pushes him. That's a foul. Referee didn't call it, so Dante goes in one-on-one. -on -one. That might be a foul, too, but they both negate each other and say, all right, let's just play on. Tom Fitzgerald. Right next to him is Greg Andrillis, one of the assistant coaches. Long ball flighted now by DC. Back to live action. Tally goes down as the ball goes out. Tally. Tally's lucky. He just demonstrated to the referee, Jerry Corey. And Jerry Corey's really being patient with him. Because he upstaged him. Had the arms waving. Carry Tally said, excuse me, sir, but I think you might have been mistaken on that last call. Send him a note after. Ball is played back.
Doherty. Different tactic, too. They're starting to put a little more pressure on Doherty and the defenders of Columbus. Doherty sends it up strong. Pope was there. Let's see how. Ansel Alcock, strong and powerful. Speedy, too. Gorey held up by Albright. That one might have been a foul, too, that was not called as Otero played it wide. Good work from Albrecht to track back on that. It's a difficult ball to play when it's played behind you like that. Yegley chesting it down. And there's Gordon. Subar Zihan. Push back. Here is Robert Barzia. A little holding there. Cunningham played it back. Barzia. He's played in several countries besides the U.S. Plays it all the way over to Clark. West will push it back for Yegley. Barziha. Back for Todd Yegley. Outside for West. Clark made the run. West didn't hit him. Instead, Dante Washington will square it over. DeBrito. Columbus trying to get more possession here. DC United has won the possession stat in nine out of 13 games this year, but they still have a losing record. So, so much for possession. Goals. Everyone wants goals. That's it. From the far side, DC United will have a throw in. They gave out t shirts last week to their players and staff that indicated that the 2000 season was just beginning, and last week was game one. That's the attitude they wanted to bring out. Erase the past, Thomas Rogan said, but learn from it, too. Here's Arce was fouled. So now the free kick comes up, and Richie Williams was thinking about a quick one, and Jason Farrell stepped in. It's just all over the field. DC United, like I said before, it's, it's an urgency. Understanding it. I don't know what Thomas Rogan said in the locker room, but obviously he said, listen, you guys aren't, aren't playing well. You're not playing well, and no one looks like they care out there. something to that effect. You're paraphrasing. <laughs> Free kick, the wall move. Here comes the shot, but it's too high. Jordan will have a goal kick. Launched up by Telly. You see the free kick going for a little bit of power. Just too hard. One little touch. Gets it over the wall. He just needs some more dip there. It had the speed in terms of the Pepsi power shot at 54 miles an hour, but that one also high on the Columbus goal. 54th minute. Columbus leading one to nothing on a Cunningham goal. They wanted to get off to the quick start, and they did. But they haven't been able to add to the lead. And D.C. has come out the stronger team in the second half. Rich Williams is becoming much more involved in the play and getting, getting the ball and being that link from the midfield from one side to the other and from the defense to the forwards. There he's controlling. He's telling people where to go. On the far side, played in. Diaz Arce, a bump from Yegley. No call. Arzeha. That one's blocked. Played back. Hey, Diaz Arce didn't argue that too much. Dante Washington sends it forward. Judah Cooks. Richie Williams settling it down. Wide for Talon. And he'll push up. Portetto. On the run. Judah Cooks. A decent ball through on the right side. Wood plays it back for Albright. That one's deflected. Back into the box. Almost a dangerous play there. AJ Wood could hustle. And out it goes. And he's going to stay there for the corner. That's a tough call to make because the referee's assistant was screened by two players and it was coming right at him. They're actually going to call it a free kick for DC. Even closer. Far post. Headed away by Columbus. DC brings it down with talent. Richie Williams after. The sixth minute. Columbus 
by one. Denton and Diaz Arce reached up and couldn't get it. Goal kicked order. As soon as Denton got the ball, Diaz Arce drifting to the far post. He loves to do that. He loves to drift and then boom, he's inside. If the ball comes inside, he can, can beat you to the goal. He can beat you to the ball. But he wants those balls flighted in. And right now he's not getting the service at the, at the byline, at the end line. But he says, all right, I can win these head balls. So even, even if it's back in the defense, he says, flight it in there. Put it in the mix. Jordan gets ready to put it back in play. Columbus leads one to nothing. And the defending champions who are without five starters tonight, but not using that as an excuse. Playing hard here at the second half, especially. Williams on the far wing. The overlapping run is made. Then the cross that's blocked. Otero in the box. Tackle away, but DC gets possession back. A strange ball that floats across, then Wood goes down. With Gorey there, Wood losing his balance when he was up in the air. Here is Dante Washington. And DC wins that ball. Albright. Take it on two. Still got possession, but it's a throw. -in. Albright ready. Back for Richie Williams. Washington puts on pressure. And on Cooks, he will too. Eddie Pope. Williams holds. Drives it long. Far side. What is up? Now Gorey. Columbus winning a lot of these balls in here defensively. That was one of your trademarks. Columbus is, is basically in a shell. If they can weather this storm and then break through and break free, because DC's pushing a lot of people forward, and even Eddie Pope is the only guy back right now. Andrew will play it across to the far side. And out it goes. Denton touched it last. It is soccer Saturday here on ESPN. Two other games going on. Granopolis, the player of the week, has the only goal in the battle for first place in the East. And Diallo has scored both goals his 11th and 12th of the year. Tampa Bay leads Dallas. And if you want to see up to 100 soccer matches you can't see anywhere, you can do that to order the package. Call your cable company, DirecTV, or Dish Network. You can get up to 100 additional matches not seen normally in your area. Darty came out of goal. And it's over the top. And that scared a few people with a higher seats here at Columbus. He already came a couple, couple, couple feet, couple feet out and said, uh-oh, I, I am in no man's land. I don't know what to do here. And A.J. Wood saw him coming out. Couldn't quite get it over the top of him. Oh. But he saw, he saw Doherty come out and said, all right, I'm just going to drop it off to the far corner. Well, A.J. Wood has made a difference for Pete Marino. He's been more active and he's better in the air, but most important, he's better conditioned now. No offense to Pete, but he's not been playing. No, and I, and I think Thomas Rangan said, all right, I'm going to put Marino in and, and see what he can do here. Washington got a piece of that ball. And now D.C. on the far side. Williams. Decent ball in the middle of Andre. An even better ball up the wing. That'll send D.C. on the attack. And then drives it. Behind Diaz Arce. Columbus with one block. A.J. Wood pushes it back. Richie Williams. Nice move there. Over to Eddie Pope. Right side to Cooks. Now to Richie Williams. He told me earlier he was disappointed at not being called for the Nike U.S. Cup team. He's had some caps with the national team since 1999, but was not called this time. Cooks. To the right. Albright. Hangs it up there. It was up for grabs. Andre made a decent run after it. He was marked by Mike Clark. Play it out from the back, right side. 61st minute, Jim Williams on the ball. Andrew. A.J. Wood held up his run nicely. He's got it left. Cuts it across. He did everything right until the end. He's got to get that ball up in the air. Cooks. He's got a lot of confidence tonight. Pushing forward. Maybe sometimes recklessly, but he'll learn that. Near side, Williams stays tough, maybe too tough. Cunningham may have helped that a little too. Well, how often do you see?
see one call made, and three coaches are up, Alexi. Every everyone's up, but you know, if you're Cunningham, you say, all right, well, listen, I, I just got pushed around by Richie Williams. You know, I, I, I don't want to make a big deal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Thomas Rodney was up, Tom Fitzgerald, and one of his assistants, Greg Andrews, up on the same play. You know, they both weren't arguing the same thing. But all, all kidding aside, Richie Williams, you know, he's, he's getting into it. He's yeah. so much more involved in the play than he was in the first half. Well, somebody has to step up for D.C. to win it on the road. That's where you're counting. Jay Wood. A slip there for young Chris Albright, but he recovers well. Here is Albright with a cross. Doherty got beaten on that post. No shot there. Now a cross. Elcock with a piece. Now it's Kurt away. Thomas fighting for that. And now the whistle blows. And the foul is called by Jerry Corey. DC United under Thomas Rung and has found some energy at halftime. Frank Yallop, by the way, is his assistant to his right. Longtime veteran of this league in the Canadian Soccer Association, where he played internationally for his country. Doherty screaming at the wall as it's flighted up. Doherty almost got caught wrong-footed, but he got that one away. Still communicating with his defenders in front of him. We've got a throw-in coming up for DC. Here's Arce across. That's blocked. Garcia got a piece. Debrito gets the rest. Richie Williams is there. 17 previous meetings between these two teams. 12 games ended with a one-goal margin. Nine straight. That's how close these teams normally play. Williams. And we've got a one-goal game here tonight. Richie Williams will swing it wide. Onger lifts it up. Headed up. That's too high. Eddie Pope looking for an advantage inside the box. Columbus is in a shell right now, and, and they are getting shelled. Crosses coming in from free kicks from the, from the run of play. Doherty flying all over the place, trying to get the cross. He doesn't know where he is, and there's a lot of people in front of him. He's just got to get it out of pressure. But DC has got so, so many balls that are just throwing it in. And right now, you need defenders in there to say, all right, we're in the trenches right now. We've we, we got to play well. We've got to get the ball out, and we have to withstand this pressure. We're talking about those one-goal games, and not only have they been so many, but Columbus has only won two of them. They won the last one. Would like to make it two straight here. As Corey brings it down. In the second half, DC has outshot Columbus five to nothing. Has Columbus Alexi taken their foot off the pillow? Now they can't get it back because of DC. I think I think DC just there's all just say, all right, listen, we're, we're going to play right now, and they're, they're doing exactly what Columbus did in the first half. They have more bite. They're winning the balls. Once they get possession, they're maintaining possession. They're having patience, and then they're flighting balls in the box. So now you're Columbus. How do you counter that? You don't have a halftime talk anymore. That's gone. <laughs> you say, boy, uh, we were playing really well the first half. half what happened here? But like I said before, you, you got to have patience. You have to weather the storm and say, all right, they might have more possession. They may be getting more opportunities, but let's make sure we clear it. And when we do clear it, let's win the ball and go at it. Rito just get booked by the circle around the halfway line. Joining Andre in the referee's bad book. This is also when leaders are so important. People out there telling you, all right, maybe things aren't going as well as you did in the first half, but you've got to keep your head. John DeBrito getting a little over anxious there and coming in from hunt, cleaning house. It's a yellow card. And it off and Doherty got a piece, not all. He's down, and the ball's out. Corner kick. I think Doherty wanted a foul. He's hot. Once again, balls getting flighted into the box, head-ons, just big guys crashing all over the place. You know, DC right now says, we just want to go. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't matter. We'll crash, and we'll burn everything in sight, and let's get the goal. Off the corner kick. Tally was the closest target. Instead, Cunningham to West. Jersey's tugged there by Denton. And then two more players go down. Richie Williams gets called for the foul. It's getting intense, as you might expect, when these two teams meet. They can play it here, RFK, or at a neutral site. Wouldn't matter. Here's Farrell. Farrell shot wide of a diving from Prestis. This is Crew Stadium in Columbus, Ohio. Good crowd on hand watching. On a Budweiser game summary, Jeff Cunningham has the only goal, and it came so long ago that Columbus... Gambling a bit offensively, have been called offside five times. They've been outshot tonight, largely because of the second half by DC United. And, and as you said before, it's intense. You can feel it. I love, I love the way it's just one big cycle. It's getting more and more and more in both.
chances and just so much more intensity than, than there was in the first half, especially from DC. Up the right side. Cabrillo. Left foot's it long. Columbus trying to stay onside. That time they do. Down the right wing. You've got West. A couple of players make the run, including Washington. Prestis. That's a great job because if he bobbles that ball, Corey has a tap in goal. The way this year has gone, the odds wouldn't be all that great for DC to come from two goals down, even for this much time left. They could do it, but the odds wouldn't be great. AJ Wood to Diaz Arce. Albright looking, shooting high. He got it all. Good luck. If he had a good look at it, he hit it hard. before when you're in a situation like this for Columbus you're in the trench and you need defenders in there they're gonna lead by example Todd Yegley back there clearing balls selling himself sell, selling his body right here saying all right I don't care how I'll get it out but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it out it's my head my knee my ear my chest it doesn't matter they just Todd Yegley at the start of the year with an injury but he's played the last six matches full 90s Clark to the right Back to the feet of Doherty. That was dangerous, but he handled it well until then. But it could have been worse. Had he bobbled up all, he had Diaz Arce right there. Diaz Arce, no matter what happens, he's still the man that Columbus must watch in the back. He's the game breaker. Williams to Judah Cooks. That one's blocked. Columbus lost it. Andre fires, tipped over by Doherty. What a well-disguised shot from Andre that was loaded. A great shot from Jeff Andre. He comes, picks the pocket, and then everyone thinks he's going to cross it, and he hits a great shot. Doherty just gets his fingertips on it. A bit of a pump bag, throws the defender. Great shot, great shot there by Jeff Andre. Not bad for a Canadian. Okay. And Doherty coming up big on that save. Still one other Columbus, 69th minute. And we're going to see a change. Young Bobby Convey. I say young, a lot of these guys are young, but he's real young. He just turned 17 years old. He replaces Otero. And meanwhile, Mike Lapper will come on to replace Jeff Cunningham. Cunningham got it done, but now they need some defensive help. We'll talk about the changes in a moment. First, this important corner. All the way to the far side. Headed back towards Doherty, but he's got it. Well, if you're Columbus, you no longer need three front runners, and they want to get Lapper back into conditioning so you can understand that switch. Foul is called push on Columbus. Seen a break. 
takeaway. He knew he couldn't catch up to that ball. How about New England in a battle on soccer Saturday? They won first place. Miami 0, New England 2. Cronopla scores the first goal, and then John Harps comes through and seals the victory for New England. Great three points for them. And their next team. The boxes is cleared away. There's Bobby Conger. Amazing that a kid at age 16 could play in any professional league. And he's out there. This one's too high for Diaz Arce. Thomas Rogan says he's given him more minutes than he thought he would have to, but he's not at all afraid to use him. The kid's done well. You gotta have confidence and for a player of his age to come in and have his confidence and more importantly, get this type of experience. I mean, when I was 16, I you know, I, I was just being comfortable like going to the battle. You know? I mean, it, 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 he is getting such incredible experience and to look at him as a summer for for most of us that have played here for a long time, when we were 16, we didn't know what was going on. I still find it amazing. There is Bobby Conby on the wing. That goes up. Bobby Conby's even started four games this year. Mario Bori will put it in play. A long throw in. Here is West. He got behind Pope. West in the box. Try to slide it. Garcia out to Washington. The scoop pass. Garcia has hit the shot. Side of the netting. Dante Washington says, oh, what am I going to do? I'm going to scoop it right over the top. And Marzika right in here. Ah, just off his, outside of his left foot. He wants that back and put it in the far post. Once again, right over the top. Put it back where it came from, out the far post. Ah. And it's frustrating for him because, most important, he knew that that was probably a game winner. That was it. Game over for Columbus. 2-0. Thank you very much. They weathered the storm. Uh, and it deflates D.C. Denton's pass to Diaz Arce, pushed back and then wide. DC United looking for the equalizer, pushing up, third away by Alcock. Ryan West, and now Ansel Alcock on the run, nice ball to Gorey. Convy tracks back, West is left. Alcock shows up for him. Inside, Gorey leaning, right back on there, Washington. They're holding him, down he goes, it's a loose ball and it's cleared. Dante Washington was appealing there, both arms wrapped around him. How is it not a penalty kick? Dante, I don't, I don't, think, I don't think he wanted to turn here. He gets the ball, he's inside this, almost inside the six yard box. It comes in, Mario Gorey dribbles around, nice through ball through. They take, they take the ball back, have a little bit of patience, get the ball into Dante. Mario Gorey spin around, Dante, okay, he wants to drop this ball off to somebody. He doesn't want to turn, there's too many bodies around for him to do anything. Second corner kick for Columbus, back to the live action. Oh, headed out, Mario Gorey risking his body for that flying attempt at a goal. Starting June 19th at 11 p.m., ESPN 2 will get you inside Major League Soccer with the oh, premiere of MLS Extra Time, the one-hour weekly show will have analysis and all-access looks at the prior weekend's action. Feature matches, extensive highlights, and previews of upcoming games. The MLS Extra Time will be hosted by Rob Stone. It starts June 19th. Well, MLS deserves a show of their own. That's who they're going to get one. Here's the long ball, and Doherty swatted that away, but DC United, to their credit, keeps coming. And they'll get a corner out of this. Their third. So not many corner kicks tonight, five total. And then someone else will take it. Williams was over there. Come on, guys, come on, guys. Talent instead. No football. Come on, Mike, come on. Make a dent on that side as he goes long. Go, go, A couple players down in the box. AJ Wood tracks it. The far side of the flag area. And it's cleared by Marzia. Conjure with a little room. Sends it in low and wide. They may have rushed out when there are other options. Great facial here on that guy. Yeah, you can admire it. You can respect it. And a musician. Love it. You have so much in common. <laughs> i got to ask you at this point, how much do you miss the game? Your team is in first place, Kansas City. Uh, well, yeah, I know. Thanks for reminding me. Well, I get a call from Tony Miola every week. Yeah, we won again. I'm like, ah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I have to hear about this every week. Here's Diaz Arce with everybody chasing. 
And that time, a little bit too much speed from Ansel Elcock, who wins that ball. Up the wing. Out it goes. Columbus has it. Mario Gorian to throw it. Gorian will go long. Brought down right side. Omger. It's cleared away. Marciha. Johnny goes for Richie Williams. Robert may have embellished it a tad. Richie Williams, one of the smaller players in the league at 5-5, but one of the players with the biggest hearts. 78th minute, trying to lead his team back. Columbus leads on a Cunningham goal, which came a long time ago in the second minute. On the run, right side. Clark Cross brought down. Dante Washington has to go back and try to recover. Diaz Arce, meanwhile, goes hard after it with DeBrito. Neither one gets it. A.J. Wood with a stumble there that may have cost him. Williams to Convy. Nice run down the middle. And the teenager has that one cleared away. Convy found the seat. Oh, he, was, yeah, he, he got himself open and he, he was looking to hit it. That's good confidence. There's Onger. Lifting it up. Diaz Arce's there. Loose ball. Goal. A.J. Wood. It is tied. You can see it coming. 1-1. One, one. Well, Diaz Arce didn't get it, but he was certainly a distraction. And if anybody deserved a goal on this team, it's probably A.J. Wood for his efforts since coming up. You knew it had to happen eventually. All these balls being flighted into the box. Jeff Onger right into the six-yard box. That's a keeper's ball. He's got to come out and clean house. Diaz Arce goes up, causes all kinds of problems. It falls right to A.J. Wood. Not a problem. You're not going to score an easier goal. How demoralizing as you look again, Alexi, is it for a team that has the game? You're in the 79th minute, you lose your shutout, and you know, possibly the game? Well, the problem is also that Columbus has backed up so far into their own net, and Dory's having to make saves on his line, but that's his area. Six yard box and even out is his area. He's got to command it. He's got to come out, and if he has to put his fist right through the back of his own player's head to get the ball out, he's got to do it. And he's been doing it very, very well, very, very well up to then. There's a big conversation going on. It looked like from here that Jerry Corey was calling the captains over to tell them to knock off what's going on. Well, he knows the intensity in this game just increased dramatically with the 1-1 tie there. And that was good. No card, but bring the captains over. The next guy won't be as lucky, I'm sure. But at least the warning was given. Here's Columbus. Needing to get the foot back of the pedal, which is not maybe as easy as it would sound. Here's D.C. with momentum and the tying goal. Condi touches it to Diaz Arce. Well, Diaz Arce will play it wide left side. And this one is deflected out for a corner. Another look here at the goal. Jeff Andre just curls the ball in. Doherty's got to see this, and he's got to be out, and he's got to punch that. He doesn't have to catch it, but he's got to punch that. He was a little bit late, and then he got tangled up with Diaz Arce, and that fell right to A.J. Wood. Corner kick for D.C. Remember the shot that Marzia had hit the side of the netting. That was 2-0. Instead, D.C. has come back. Inside, that was third back, but D.C. still has possession. Launched again. A couple of players went after that one. He knows why that was Cooks on the diving header attempt. West was held, or so it appeared. DC will come back. And then the giveaway. Marziha, long ball towards Dante Washington, but Andre is right there to Pope. Williams. Played up, Hunter. Went inside, J. Wood could get it. Here's Dante Washington pushing it back. J. Wood thought he was going to get called for a foul. Jerry Corey letting him play until that one. And Yegli is upset. A yellow card is coming. Is this a record? Is this something for the history books? Which? Bobby Conley, did he just get a yellow card? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's first, you mean, right? Yeah, the youngest yellow card ever in MLS history. Give it to a teenager. In the 82nd minute, he's not happy about it. This is there, but he's working. He's, and his job is to come in there, provide a spark, and, and win balls. And he's gotten a lot of the play, he's gotten a lot of balls, he's had some shots, and now he's got himself a card. But it shows he won't be intimidated, which is a plus for the coaching staff. you gotta, you got to have that. If you are a 16-year-old coming into this league, you have to have something special. You have to have that kind of confidence. And you see it about it coming. He's not passing up shots, and he's not passing up the opportunity to even get into the physical competition. 
legs. Intended for Gorey. Instead, Gorey will get it on the pass back. Deflected away. Garcia hit that one up off a of deflection. Columbus should have a throw in. Mike Clark will take it. West of the wing. Blocked. Fights for it. It's put it all the way back. Yegley will chase it. It will go out in front of the DC United bench. Todd Yegley with the throw in. Mario Gore. Down he goes. All bite is there. 83rd minute. DC United has come back. Columbus, the far better team in the first half. DC, the far better team in the second half. And all the numbers bear that out. Big advantage there for DC. They had the edge too in the last game, 15 4, but they lost the game 2 1. DC, that is. There's Cooks playing it in. Diaz Arce will chase it. He's going to let it go. As he knows, it's a coin. For DC, it's, it's not enough just to get the 1-1 one, one tie and say, all right, we're going to win this game. They're going to come out and get the, get the goal and go off the And they win. have to. They haven't even won in the division yet. So that's bad. They're all for five in their own division. New England on top. Fernando Cavill, first year in charge. So far, getting it done. Off that corner, it's clear. Get right through there. And out of play it goes. Throwing coming up for DC United. And I completely agree with, with Thomas Ronga when he says that this team definitely is going to be there at the end. He knows it's a long season. And he knows the quality of player that he has. And they're eventually, and, and to be fair, DC not only has played for but they, they've had some bad luck. AJ Wood will chase this ball down. And it'll go out. Players gets a lot of minutes as a 16, 17-year-old kid and Otero and the rest, you know that it'll add up to a good future. So A.J. Wood has the one goal coming off the bench. That paid off. Cunningham had one early in the second minute. Now, we've got about five minutes and some change plus some stoppage time. Well, we might see overtime. No more shootout. Thankfully. Washington broke it up. Columbus will get it back. Aguilera. Aguilera on the run. He's got the fresh legs. He'll lead it. West. The cross. And Prestes has got that ball. Columbus, is, is, they're not finding the space that they had in the first half. And, and, and on the other side, DC United, you got a guy like A.J. Wood who didn't start. That, that, doesn't, that doesn't feel good, and you don't want that. He came in, he scored the goal, he's feeling confident right now. If you're A.J. Wood, he said, give me the ball. Light it in there, just like Diaz said, He wants those balls coming in. He wants those crosses coming in. He says, I'll win this game. Williams will hold. Leads it up. In the air, there's Gordy. A.J. Wood is looking for his second goal in the Central Division tonight on Soccer Saturday. Tampa Bay, not a final yet. 2-1 over Dallas. Diallo has them both, and this is why it's so important. Columbus thought they probably were up to 19 points, but they're not there yet. They're trying to move up. They were in last place a couple weeks ago. And the next two games for Columbus are with Dallas. Big divisional games. Here's D.C. United. Not going quietly into you know, the Columbus night. They've come back. Diaz Arce with it. And they are the better team at this moment. This is soccer. Moments change. Convy. Tied up there. Referee's assistant helps out with the call. More quality minutes for Bobby Convy because he's going to be in a crunch time. Where games are won and lost. Here's West. Down the right side. He's just as fast here in the 87th minute as he was in the first minute. Fourth corner kick, or third corner kick for Columbus. And they're making noise in Crew Stadium in anticipation. Farsiha to the middle. Third away. That was A.J. Wood winning it defensively. Both heads for him.
kick it, their head on it, kick it, their foot on it, kick it, anything on it. But it's just head to head. It's beautiful. DC United throwing balls in there, Columbus throwing it down the other end. Everyone trying to win this game. They don't want overtime. Where it's goal to goal, one mistake, it's over. Although at this late stage, you figure the next goal would do it anyway. Here's DC committing several more to the attack. Richie Williams to Judah Cooks. Yigley defends. Cooks stops. Nice turn. Judah Cooks will play it back. They weren't expecting it. Now Convy settles. Nice push pass to the left. Denton tackled away. It looked good until the end. Farrell up for Washington. He tried the flick for West. Can he reach it? West has got a piece of the ball. Great effort from Richie Williams, whose own goal cost his team the game the last time. Great hustle from Richie Williams, stopping the fastest man in this game and maybe in the league. That is outstanding. Happy birthday, Rich. Oh, on his 30. Great, great work coming back and going against one of the fastest guys, if not the fastest guy out there. He's able to muscle him off with his body and is able to win the ball and maintain possession. Richie Williams giving up size, speed, and about eight years in age there. And you wouldn't know it. Diaz Arce. We're in the 89th minute. And and Miles Richie, Richie also, he also recognized the situation. He goes, all right, 80, 80 at the minute, as we said, we're not going to let a goal in here. Lead pass, Dante Washington, touching it up, tough angle for him. And it looked like as he was thinking about making the play, he sort of stumbled. I don't know what he was thinking about. He was thinking about a lot of different things, but it's not, some, things? It's not something he's going to want to see on no. the replay. No. It won't make sports center tonight. Here's Albright. Diaz Arce. Remember, it's overtime if it's tied at the end of 90 minutes. Two five-minute ones. Golden goal, so it's sudden death overtime. No shootouts. Here's Albright. Wood on the turn. That's why. But he has been dangerous, and it was deflected. We're going to have a substitution. Miles Joseph, who has started the last few games, but bothered by a cold and some allergies, was not starting today, and they went with Jason Farrell instead. But now they want to bring in Miles Joseph. They want the fresh legs. They're thinking about now and potentially overtime. Taking out a tired player in Dante Washington. Yeah, overtime is so important. And the teams are learning this year how tactically how they want to play in overtime because it, it is something new. Overtime is a very short period of time. Uh, you, you want to have some explosiveness out there, but you also don't want to give up goals. Sixth minute. Sixth quarter, I'm sorry. Coming up, one minute of extra time. As this one is headed up. Loose ball. Doherty was out. And goal kick. This is Jerry Corey. And we are now in the stoppage time. Dante Washington. That was his last touch. It was not a good one, as you mentioned. Maybe he run out of gas. Tough to tell from here. But his day is done. Tally will play it up. We are headed for overtime, barring some last-second heroics here. Diaz Arce. Pushing it back, Richie Williams. All the way across. Jerry Talley. Sends that one forward. Albright and Gory hit each other. Albright took the worst. He's still feeling it. Here's Columbus. Miles Joseph. We're a minute 15 in a stoppage. Aguilera leads it. Elcott, shot save. Rebound is out. Here's another one. Save. Press this. There's the hero of the game right there. Oh, great save. Great Two of them. Save. Flush. That's it. Somewhere in this bedlam, Alexi, the final whistle sounded. Oh, my goodness. Well, you knew that the whistle was not going to blow. They were going to allow that last chance. What a game it was. And, folks, it's still not over. We're going to come back for the Golden Gold or Sudden Death Overtime here in Columbus. It's 1-1 between these two great rivals. Introducing Creative Garden's Rollout Flower Garden that comes to you rolled up like a carpet. Just roll it out and water. You have all the mulch and nutrients and enough seeds to spring forth hundreds of beautiful flowers. 
many different varieties and dramatic colors, and they'll keep blooming season after season. I've always wanted to grow flowers. Now I have this beautiful garden, and all I did was add water. Look for the Rollout Flower Garden and other fine creative garden products at the Home Depot and garden centers everywhere. Delta Marine has great fishing boats at great prices. The fish are 16 dominant only, 120 a month. 17 dominant only, 135 a month. Procraft 170 combo, fish and ski. The Procraft 210 Super Pro. Boats, RVs, and ATVs at Delta Marine. We, we sell fun. fun! Bring your kids to Delta Marine for our National Fishing Week celebration. Free fishing demonstrations, casting contests, and more. Come join the excitement Saturday, June 3rd from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. We sell fun. ESPN Classic swings into this year's U.S. Open with a weekend-long marathon of unforgettable U.S. Opens that are fairway classics. The history of Pebble Beach grades, plus Trevino, Stewart, and of course, Nicholas. And 50 years ago, on this day in history, Ben Hogan battled back from a near-fatal car crash to reclaim his U.S. Open title. American General presents Fairway Classics. Start Saturday, June 10th at 1130 on ESPN Classic. To get ESPN Classic, call 1-800-CLASSIC today. championships, the respect of the entire racing world, and of course, groupies. Fortunately, go, go, go! this same technology goes into every Honda we build. Well, we told you the games are always physical. We didn't lie. They're always close when these two teams meet. One, one, one goal early and one goal late. Stay with us. NHRA qualifying is coming up next. After about maybe 10 more minutes, we may be going a little bit here. We'll see. Here are the goals. This is how we got here. Cunningham, right at the beginning of the game, says, oh, my goodness, look what I got. He's going to go in and put it right between Prestis's legs. DC came out in the second half, said, we'll have none of that. Jeff Andre flights the ball into the mixer. Diaz Arce goes up, and it falls right to A.J. Wood for a nice, easy tap. -in. Then right at the end of the game, West gets by everybody. He's in the clear. Rich Williams says, mm -mm, you're not going to do that to me. I'm not going to let that happen. So we now, then Alcock right at the end, could have finished it out, could have been a hero, two to one, right at the last minute of the play, could have put it away. So one, one, and in overtime, he loves his mom. Everybody does. <laughs> two five minute periods, goal to goal, if you try to pretend you get a tie, no more shootout, what do you think about it? You know, I never had a problem with the shootout. <laughs> I liked it at first, but then I got away from it. I think this is definitely better, though, because it's about the game. The shootout was an art and craft, basically. I'd rather hit. It may come down to one mistake. Or one great play. Here's Mike Clark. DC had the better second half. Columbus had the better first half. We'll see who has the next best ten minutes, if it goes that far. This one's going to be headed out. Throwing coming up. Aguilera. Mike Clark drives it across. Corey, what battle is he and Albright have had today in the air? Throwing coming up for Columbus. And Corey will take it, which generally indicates a long throw when he's over there. He's given a signal now. Touching it. 
it back to Clark. We're in the second minute, the first five minutes of overtime, and this one will get away. Columbus with some good possession, though, and, and they know the, that, the, the best part of the golden goal is that once you score, that's it. Right to the showers, yep, yep. high fives, sign some autographs, and go right and have a shower. Well, neither team can brag about winning in overtime yet. And if you're D.C., you think you'd be the happier of the two if you get a tie. If you're the visiting team and you are down as well, and you're down five starters, but they're playing like they still want to win it. On the far side, Columbus on the ball. A tale of two different halves in this game. Columbus will switch it. Clark. Aguilera. Garcia holds. Still looking. Right side. Mike Lapp. More possession. Third minute of the first. Five of overtime. Sudden death or golden goal. Whichever term you prefer. Lapper goes long. But straight up. Williams looks for it. On the far side. Columbus will get it. Apparently the ball is still in play. Holding it up. Marziha tees it up and it's blocked. And Diaz Arce will pick it up. Diaz Arce will hold. If you do see, you need points at this point in the season. Maybe in the past you would have come here and said, all right, we'll settle for a tie. That's okay. We didn't have a good, good first half. We come out here in the second half, they get the goal, but they need points here. They want to win. Denton will play it up. And that's going to be cleared by Goring. Got to love the intensity. Five starters missing for D.C., two for Columbus, and yet you're getting this kind of effort tonight. That's a plus for the league. Some people looked at that and said it's going to be a dog game with all those starters out. Talent. Conby makes the run. Tracking him is Elcock. And it's a goal kick for Columbus. Conby's still running. I'm sure he could have run from the beginning of the game. He's be better. He's so young. But he's also, he's gotten involved, as we said. He's, he's gotten his shots off, and, he, and he's gotten his touches. Here's Farrell. That's going to be broken up by Cooks. Here is Monter. DC have really settled down, though, in this game. It looked like it could be a bad night for them, giving up a goal just a couple of minutes in. Especially with the three at the back. They're key losses, but it hasn't been that way. Here's Clark. Elcock drives it. Aguilera. Andre pressuring him. Here's Clark back killing with Jason Farrell. Aguilera. Now to Farrell. Nearly five minutes gone in the first overtime, which is five minutes in length. Go two fives. If nobody scores, each team gets a point. Turned away by A.J. Wood. Wood's goal tied it. The 79th minute, that's why we're still here. That's it. The first five is over. The first five minutes is over. What did it tell you, Alexa? Not, not, not much, actually. Not much. <laughs> They're going to switch right away. And in another five minutes, it's full out. You don't have to hold anything back. But you also don't want to lose points here. Mom, I love you. NHRA qualifying is coming up immediately following this match whenever it ends and it can go no more than five minutes and next week soccer saturday doubleheader vernon crew 4 30 eastern 1 30 pacific and then the galaxy and the rapids how about the galaxy with luis Hernandez there oh it's awesome it's awesome for the league it's, it's awesome for soccer and it's awesome for la whether they need it or not it's another story it's great that they signed him for as long as they did too it was multi-year here's yankley on the left Five minutes more to be played maximum. Otherwise, if somebody scores, it's over. Long run for this ball. Marzia's got it. He still has some gas in the tank. Aguilera. That's the Alcock. Pushing it up. West. Joseph in the middle. DC blocks it. Not out. Marzia. Going long. Mario Gori off his chest. And a bit of an acrobatic attempt. Prestes is right there. Mario Gori and, and Chris Albert have been going at it all 
same thing. Well, to DC's credit, too, they have not committed many fouls in dangerous areas, so they're not giving up the free kicks, which have killed them this year. We're we'll talking this about it. Yeah, and, when you, about it. and when you talk about free kicks, there's a responsibility all around. But not only is it responsibility the law and the organization, all that stuff, but it's also a responsibility not to foul in dangerous situations yeah. and to know where you are on the field and not let that happen. Here's Paul. They've shown that discipline tonight. We are in the seventh minute of overtime. One one game. Marzija, to Williams, professional foul if it was called, but we knew how to get away with it. There's no fouls in overtime. <laughs> You're right. There's Judah Cooks. Here's Arce, Judah Cooks. He's going to get a full 90 under his belt. More than a full 100, I guess, you'd have to say. Here's Andre. Eighth minute of overtime. Convé in the box. You know, if he got by that other defender, he was going to have a go at goal. Columbus will get it back. On the far side, here they come. Look at the chase. Convé putting on pressure so the ball could not be released properly by Miles Joseph. Here's Aguilera. Richie Williams hanging on. Williams has played in every minute of every game for D.C. And the crowd has given it to him, but he's a solid player. He's not leaving anything on this field. He's given it all. The crowd's screaming for a foul on that, but Aguilera's just punching around with him. Look at Albright, who got free. A missed assignment. He'll play it across. And that was held. But Albright was wide open. This is one of the first times that we've seen Albright get free. He's looking up, he's trying to find A.J. Wood, gets to him, but it pulls right up and hits A.J. Wood's wow. head. A little harsh. I don't know if he played it intentionally. Here is Columbus coming back. We're in the ninth minute of overtime. 1-1. Yegli. West running against Pope. West is brought down. There's one that they didn't want to have called, and it wasn't. Now, that amazes me. You're right, there are no fouls in overtime. That looked like a free kick just outside the box, folks. Ninth minute of overtime. As I said, it's got to be protruding goal. And from here, we didn't see it. Here's Yegley. Off the deflection, Mario Gori's got it. It's Elcock. Long ball towards Miles Joseph. Cooks missed it, but Prestis was right there. The Columbus crew coaches are up, still screaming at Jerry Corey for not calling that last foul right outside the box. I mean, Barzia was probably looking at his chops at a free kick that was going to be about 23 yards away. Long ball play those pushers jail still screaming on the sideline and pointing saying all sorts of wonderful colorful things to the referee. He wanted that free kick. Jordan to the left. Yegley. Up the wing Elcock and Convy was very aggressive. Jerry Corey looks at the watch. In the 10th minute of overtime, Mario Gori's in the chase. A hard-fought game here in Columbus. They're fighting to the end. And that's the end. Jerry Corey has said that is the end of the match. And the crowd may be going for a while. You're looking at the Honda player of the match. And no doubt Alexei Prestes gets it, especially for those last two big saves he made before the game ended. He came in and made, made great saves. And, and, and he maintained pressure in the first half. He, you know, he didn't get, he only got scored against. I'm John Paul Delacamp. This game ends 1-1 between D.C. United and the Columbus Crew. Join us next week for a Soccer Saturday doubleheader. Tonight's game has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, a part of the Go Network, Go.com. What a game it always is when these two clubs meet.